Hello and welcome to Biology Bites. Today we will be covering carbohydrates from the biological molecules of the A-level syllabus. Our guest for this week's show is Anna. Hi Anna. Hi. So what's a carbohydrate? Well, a carbohydrate is basically a substance whose molecules are made up of sugar units. They contain three elements, carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. The carbohydrates that we need to know about are sugars, starches and cellulose. Okay, well I hear Mr Moore talking about monosaccharides a lot in class. What are they about? Well, basically a carbohydrate whose molecules contain just one sugar unit is called a monosaccharide. A monosaccharide you've probably heard a lot about is glucose. Oh yeah, it comes in two forms, alpha and beta? Exactly. If you look at the diagrams for alpha and beta glucose, you notice in alpha glucose the hydrogen that is bonded to carbon-1 is at the top, whilst the hydroxyl group OH is also bonded to carbon-1, which is at the bottom. In beta glucose, the OH is at the top and the H is at the bottom. Sounds a bit confusing. Yes, I would recommend you look at the diagrams. It's much easier to understand that way and make sure you learn how to draw them from each textbook. So, can monosaccharides join up at all? Yes. Monosaccharides join together to form disaccharides and polysaccharides. A disaccharide is basically two monosaccharide molecules joined together. For example, two alpha glucose molecules can react to form maltose, which is a disaccharide. The link between the two monosaccharides is called a glycosidic bond. Oh, okay. So, what would a polysaccharide be? Well, a polysaccharide is formed from more than two monosaccharides joined together. But how do they all link together? Well, firstly, a hydrogen atom from one monosaccharide bonds to the hydroxyl group, OH, on the other monosaccharide, releasing a molecule of water. The glycosidic bond is formed between carbon-1 of one molecule and carbon atom-4 of the other, so we would call this an alpha-1-4 to glycosidic bond. This reaction is called a condensation reaction. Is there a reverse to this reaction? Yes. The reverse reaction would be called hydrolysis. It would involve a molecule of water reacting with the glycosidic bond and breaking it apart. So what were the three polysaccharides that we needed to learn? Starch, glycogen and cellulose. Let's start with starch. Starch is the main storage material on plants. It's a mixture of two polysaccharides of alpha-glucose, amylose and amylopectin. What's the difference between amylose and amylopectin? Well, amylose is a long, unbranched chain of alpha-glucose. It has a coiled structure which makes it compact and good for storage, whereas amylopectin is a long, branched chain of alpha-glucose. And starch is insoluble in water. What was the test for starch again? You simply add iodine solution. If it goes blue-black colour, you know that starch is present, but if it stays orange, you know that there is none starch present. And glycogen? Glycogen is the main storage material in animals, and it is another polysaccharide of alpha-glucose. Its structure is very similar to amylose, except it also has branches where one to six glycosidic bonds are formed. It's also a very compact molecule, so it's good for storage. And finally, cellulose. That's found in cell walls and plants, isn't it? Yes. Cellulose is another polysaccharide made of gluco- glucose molecules, but this time they are beta-glucose, so they're linked with beta-1-4 to glycosidic bonds. Does cellulose coil? No, cellulose does not coil. They lie straight. Cellulose provides structural support for the cells. Ah, OK. Well, this concludes our podcast for today. We hope you found this useful. Don't forget to check out more Biology Bites podcasts on the blog. Stay tuned!